Shalom to the nation of Israel and the hopeful elect. This bar is all coming in the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the Apostles Great Millstone and to the hopeful elect, pushing his word and truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. Uh, the lesson we taught the Most High is merciful. Right? Micah. 7 and 18. Uh, Micah 7 and 18. Who is a power like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of his of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. Right? So the Lord, Yahweh, well, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, right? Well, they're both they're both merciful, but uh, if you want to just talk about Yahweh, Yahweh is merciful on to Israel, because Israel is his people; those are his chosen people, and he's given his power on to Yahweh Shai, his son, right? So that's why you say Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, or you can say Yahweh Yahweh Shai, but you know Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai is merciful unto Israel only. That's where he has the mercy for it. Now, right now on the planet, right now you're seeing all these crazy. Um, global events with nature, especially. Let's just talk about that alone, right? But the Lord is having mercy on His men, because the men are scattered. You know, the elect are everywhere, right? The whole full elect. But even though these things are happening, they will be saved out of it, right? They're going to be saved out of it, so they're going to be fine, right? But it says, "Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth?" Iniquity, right? So the Lord pardons iniquity. So all the iniquity that we have committed in uh, this life, in our past life, right? The Lord will pardon it, but He only do that for His servants. So you got to be serving Him. Okay, so we're gonna go to Ecclesiasticus two and eleven. For the for the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long serving and very pitiful. And forgive sins and save it in the time of affliction. So the affliction that you're going through right now, right? Because every man of the Lord is going through their own trials and tribulations. Right? The Lord has is gonna have mercy on you, mercy on you and save you in your time of affliction. But it's gonna be um there's a scripture that says the elect are gonna be scarcely saved, right? So just how the elect are gonna be scarcely saved at the end, they're gonna be scarcely saved out of your afflictions. It's the same thing because he's constantly testing you for that last test, right? Which is going to be with the MOTB, right? So it's always a test. It's preparing you for the, the major test, the exam. But the point is that the Lord is going to have mercy on you, right? But you have to believe. If you don't believe, then it's not going to happen. The Isaiah 55 and 7. Let the wicked for, forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, Yahweh, and he will have mercy upon him and to our power, for he will abundantly pardon. Right? But that's why it says, let him return unto the Lord. So he has to return unto the Lord. Right? So he has to come back and serve his Lord, his power. Right? And to serve your power, you have to submit. Right? Because when you're, uh, say you're a, a captive, or let's say you're uh, um, someone who's become a prisoner, taken as a prisoner, you have to submit unto the person who, who uh, has captured you. If you don't, you're going to die. It's pretty much what's going to happen. Because let's say you're uh, a slave, that's been, uh, a man that's been captured and who's become a slave, and you're a rebellious slave, either they're going to they're gonna maim you or they're going to kill you. And sometimes they maim you and then they kill you, right? As an example. But the point is they're going to be, they're going to, they're going to, uh, they're going to, uh, they're going to deal with you, right? And usually it's death because you're not submitting unto your, your, your captive or your captors. Right? So it's all about submission, hum uh, humility. Right? So, but if you do that, that's when he take care of you. Right? It's like, okay, he's listening, he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. You know, they start giving you things, they start care taking care of you so you can do your job. Right? Because they still need you to do your job. It's the same thing with the Lord. Right? Obviously, it's not that, you know, it's just an analogy, but the thing is, we are servants. So we have a job to do. Right? But if you do your job, he's going to take care of you. If you don't do your job, he's not going to take care of you. It's very simple. 
It's very simple. It's just like a relationship with you and your woman. All right, so Joel, 2 and 12. Uh, Joel 2 and 12. Therefore also now saith the Lord Yahweh, turn ye even to me with all your mind, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rent your mind, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord Yahweh your power, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Right? So turn your mind to the Lord. So you have to submit. Right? You have to submit mentally in your mind. Because you can say that you turn unto the Lord, but what do your actions say? Right? And that's how you know someone's really, really, really uh, um, means what they say is what they do with with, that, with based on what they said. If they said they're gonna study three times a week, let's see if they do it. If they didn't do it, and they didn't really, they didn't really submit or commit in their mind. It was just it was just speaking uh, uh, light words, right? That's where you gotta submit in your mind. So Ecclesiasticus six and thirty seven. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments. He shall establish thy mind and give thee wisdom at thine own desire. So the more you submit to the Lord, the more humble you are to Yahweh Shem Shai, the more you serve Yahweh Shem Shai, is the more wisdom, knowledge, wisdom, understanding he can give you, the more he can deal with you. Right? It just makes it's, it's it's balance. It's perfect. It's a perfect situation, uh, relationship, right? The more you give, the more you get, right? It just makes perfect sense. It's simple but not easy though, because you're still in the flesh. You're fighting the flesh. It's simple but not easy, right? That's why it says you gotta continually meditate. So you got it has to be. You can't just do it once or twice and say, "Oh, okay, I'm good." No, it's, it's, it's like you gotta do it all the fucking time, all the time, all the time. It have to be. You have to be obsessed, right? That's why the scriptures say rehearse the righteous acts. So you're constantly rehearsing, going going over it over and over and over and over and over and over again, because you know, and only the elect are gonna do that. That's what we call ourselves the hopeful elect, but only the elect are gonna do that, right? Because they have that zeal. Right, and then you have rutiza, you get beamed up, you get your body changed, and you won't have to, you won't have to uh, physically or mentally think about doing the right thing. You're just gonna do it. That's the reward. You don't have to think about these things anymore. You're just gonna do it. Right, but right now you gotta do that. The Lord's gonna have mercy on His men because, like I said, we're in the flesh, so you're not gonna be perfect. But because you're trying, you're actually putting the the the, the effort into doing it. He's gonna have mercy on you. He's gonna He's gonna build you up. He's going to give you more. He's going to give you more. Because the scriptures say, also, uh, I roughly paraphrase it, but Apollo watereth, uh, and it says another name, but then Yahweh gives the increase. Right? So at the end of the day, he gives the increase. So he just wants to see you actually put the effort, actually try. Right? And he's going to know you're trying if you're trying in your mind. Right? Because he knows your thoughts. That's what you actually, you have to really meditate on it. you got to be, you know, Anyways, let's go to the next one. I'm going to go on a rant. Um, Romans <clears throat> 9 and 12. Oh. Romans 9 and 12. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. It's pretty self-explanatory. What shall we say that is there unrighteousness with Yahweh? Yahweh forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of Yahweh that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto the Pharaoh, unto Pharaoh, even for the this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee. And that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore, have me mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will harden, and who he will, whom he will hardeneth. 
right? So at the end of the day, the Lord chooses who he has mercy on, right? But he's going to have mercy on his servants. Because we're at the end now. So literally the, the elect are going to make it through with the, you know, with the multitude. But the, the elect are going to make it through. So, you know, and that's it. I'm not going to keep talking on that. Um, the last one is Deuteronomy 4. 31 throughout 40 and 31 for the Lord Yahweh for the Lord Yahweh thy power is a merciful power he will not forsake thee neither destroy thee nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swore unto them right so the Lord's not going to forget the covenant he made with our forefathers which was us right but at the end of the day if you're you know if you're the one of the elect you're going to be doing what you're supposed to be doing to the best of your ability Right? And the Lord will have mercy on you and, and scarcely, scarcely save you of your time of affliction. Right? So, anyways, I just want to make a point on the mercy because a lot of things, things are getting hotter. Things are getting a lot more, uh, the pressure is increasing. So, everyone, every brother's lot is going to get increased in intensity, but he's also going to build you up in the spirit at the same time while it's happening. Right? And the more you get built up, the more you're going to be more aware of it. You're going to see it and it's going to increase your faith. And it's gonna make you keep pushing uh, on on harder and further, and being more grounded and in, in being more um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? More zealous in this truth and in your faith in the Lord. Anyways, hopefully this lesson was edifying to the hopeful elect that pushes word and truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. Inshallah, until next time.